Go ahead. Hey, this is, I'm Bruce Damer. I'm the curator and founder of the DigiBarn Computer Museum, and this is what we think is the oldest intact mint condition personal computer in the world, MITS Altair 8800, serial number 47 assembled. That means it wasn't a kit, it was an assembled unit. Uh, shipped probably in February or so of 1975, and it's possibly the oldest sort of mint condition. Uh, we believe never used, never opened up, never powered up uh, Altair in the world. What makes you think it's the first? The gentleman who donated it uh, sent it in, uh, I believe I'll have to check the email, he, he wrote and said these are unused, they're in perfect condition. And he sent it in the original shipping box with the original foam, you know, 30, 35-year-old foam. Right. Uh, and when I opened it up, there's not, I realized there wasn't a scratch on it. Um, the serial number is uh, 22047A. Right. Um, and that meant uh, assembled number 47. And you've got it right here next to uh, the one that you already had in your in your archives, right? And this one was... Yeah, uh, a kit model that was much older, or at least much not not much older, but uh, further along in the production process, right? Yeah, this is serial number 22, and MITS Altair has always started with a 22, uh, 22-3204K, which would have meant 3,204th kit Got it. Uh, was sent out. So this could have been, gosh, months later. Uh, they were selling quite a few per right. month. And this one is uh, signed by a whole bunch of members of the Homebrew Computer Club. Yeah, if we look here, we see this. Uh, here's the here's the case, and right. this is from our 2005 30th anniversary event right. of the 30th birthday of the Homebrew Computer Club. So we've got Captain Crunch, the famous John Draper, Captain Crunch, Bob Lash, Alan Baum, Michael Holly, Lee Felsenstein, who ran the club, and of course the famous Steve, Steve. Wozniak. Right, got it. So you uh, you think that we could uh, open this this mint condition one up and uh, sort of access the the original air? Yeah, what we're going to do a Geraldo Rivera thing here. But before we do that, let's look inside what is in a. This is a, a you know a modified uh, kit. This would have come as a kit. They would have soldered these boards together. This first board is the Rev One eighty eight eighty eighty CPU board with the Intel eighty eighty chip right there. That yep. white ceramic, the very earliest uh, chip and this is an IO board going to a CRT to a, a TV probably Got it. so this is assembled by somebody right but in this case uh, what we think is inside here is uh, pro it has to have a CPU board in it probably an early one it may not have anything else that may all have been they would assemble the user would put in their memory board or something so right. we just have no idea what's in here Got it. So they would modify it to suit their purposes. They would modify it. You pretty much had to, otherwise all you're doing is going to be switching uh, these switches and putting in your instructions. There's no printer, there's no uh, CRT monitor, or nothing. Right. So it's a it's really a toy for bit clickers. <laughs> so if we... This may take me a little bit of effort here. Um, you'll probably have to edit out a lot of this. Gonna see if okay if they Phillips. So there's these are just four screws on the back here. I hope I get the right ones. Yep, that's one. So we're opening up the Altair. Could could have been the earliest. Why do you think that this computer was was donated to the DigiBarn? Well, a lot of people as they're getting older. You know, their their spouses want the garage back, their moving <laughs> houses. Right. Or they, they care a lot about a system they may have built and built a business on or a life on. And they really want to, uh, uh, they want to have a good home for it. So that they don't, they don't see it go to a landfill. Right. And something like this is important enough that this fellow who unfortunately sadly died uh, only a couple of weeks after donating these pieces, um, you know, it would have potentially gone to a landfill because who knows what this is. Right. 
What was it like for you when you uh, opened up the box? I mean, if it, if it had been in oh. its original packaging and had never seen the light of day before, what, the, what was that like for you? It was exciting because it was, I realized the, the, the rarity of, of such a thing. Oh, here we go. And that it was special that someone had preserved this for 35 years or 34, 35 years. So you're ready to see what we've got in Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Let's see it. Okay, let's, let's pull off. Let me get this out of the way. So here we go, folks. What do we have in here? Oh, we have no boards. Oh, we have one board. Okay, what do we have here? Goodness gracious. What we, looks like what we have here is, look at this, completely clean, absolutely clean. It's, it's an absolute, it's a chassis, but it has a board in it. It's a 1K static memory board Rev Zero, so this would have been an extremely early. This would have been the first production run, uh, 1K. I mean 1K. Mm -hmm. So all these chips here are are serving as this is probably a, you know, it's probably half a K, two half a K chips, and then the control circuitry. I could probably lift that out. So that what was ordered was a chassis with just 1k of RAM. So maybe what what the user... Oh, here it is. Yeah, 1k stack for your board Rev Zero. I can't really see that. Can you see it from there? No, it doesn't look... No. Does it come out? It's too fuzzy. I'll take a picture of it. Well, this is great. So there's no... There's no CPU. There's no actual CPU, but there. So what they would have done? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I'm not getting this backwards. No, this is about right. The, see these little really wimpy plastic uh, brackets here, right. which I don't think would have lasted very long. Certainly, I don't want to break anything here, but they would have slipped this board right down here. Yep. See, and the board was just seated in here for shipping. Yep. And pushed it down, and that would have been the memory. So this would have been the, the construction of uh, a machine. Uh, the and first, then, and first then, what step. would they have added to it? They would have uh, possibly. What happened is they had this board ordered separately, right? And then they would have slipped. See, there's only four slots here, right? They would have slipped that in next to it. Because you can't do a whole lot with just the CPU. I mean, you need some memory. So clearly this one has a whole bunch, a whole lot more uh, equipment built built into it because it was a kit. Well, um, this would have, what would have come would have been a whole lot of plastic bags with chips and resistors and capacitors and whatnot. Got it. Uh, Ziploc bags and these boards that were pre-printed circuits. And the person would have soldered all these these chips on. Got it. And, and often it wouldn't work, uh, but then then they would have inserted them here, and it, right. and these are the sort of bus lines. You see these white cables that go off of the board, and they go up to different front panel switches. Got it. Well, this battery is about to die, I'm afraid, so I think we should uh, end the video. But uh, thank you for for letting us uh, see the uh, the very first uh, you know the very first viewing of the inside of this machine. Thank you.